know those stories that stick with you long after you've heard them? The ones that make you double check your locks and sleep with the lights on? Well, buckle up, because today we're diving into one of those, the Sanders Farm disappearances. And we're talking about a string of disappearances here, not just one or two. 28 women, gone, vanished, in just a handful of years. All from the same corner of eastern Colorado. It's the kind of chilling statistic that makes you wonder if there's a connection, you know? Like, is this just a string of tragic coincidences, or is there something more sinister at play? It's a question that's haunted investigators for years. And that's where our source material comes in. A fictional screenplay called Goodbye Stranger. Think of it as our roadmap. Not necessarily a literal account of events, but a way to explore the potential motives and patterns that might be at play in a case like this. Okay, so full disclosure, we're diving into the world of fiction here, but Goodbye Stranger doesn't shy away from the darkness. In fact, it throws us right into the deep end with that opening line about 200 active serial killers in the U.S. 200. Yeah, and it makes you realize this isn't just a story, right? These are real fears, real dangers yeah. that exist in our world. Exactly. But back to Goodbye Stranger, the story really kicks off with Norris Baker. She's the woman who escaped, and her experience, at least in the screenplay, becomes this kind of terrifying window into what might have happened to the other women. And it's a harrowing escape, too. I mean, imagine yeah. this. A thunderstorm raging, rain coming down in sheets, and you're running barefoot through a muddy cornfield in the dead of night. Don't forget the part where an arrow whistles past her ear. Right, exactly. That detail, as small as it seems, adds this whole other layer of terror. Like the screenplay is saying, this isn't just about running and hiding. This is about being hunted. And that's where the genius of Goodbye Stranger comes in. It captures those sensory details that often define these kinds of traumatic experiences. The mud, the rain, the sound of your own heartbeat pounding in your ears as you flee for your life. Those details, they become visceral memories. They're the kind of things that stay with a victim long after the event itself. And they can be incredibly valuable in a real-life investigation. It's like, how do you even begin to process something so horrific? But those sensory details, they bypass the logical part of your brain and tap into something deeper, something primal. It's like those details hold the key to unlocking the truth, both for the victim and for those trying to piece together what happened. Okay, but Goodbye Stranger doesn't just drop us into this abstract world of fear and escape. It anchors the story in these very specific locations. We've got Lulu's Bar, the truck stop where Norris escapes to. These places feel so familiar, you know? Like, we've all been to those kinds of roadside establishments. That's what makes it even more unsettling. It's that juxtaposition of the ordinary and the extraordinary. Like, this could happen anywhere, to anyone. It's happening in places we pass every day without a second thought. And speaking of places that seem ordinary but might hold dark secrets, let's talk about the Sanders family and their meatpacking plant, Sanders McNulty. Ah, uh, yes. Huh. The local family business with a generations-old legacy. Everyone knows their name. They're practically local royalty. Right. But Goodbye Stranger hints that there might be more to Sanders McNulty than meets the eye. We're introduced to Jacob, the patriarch, and his son Aaron, who seem to be running the show. They've got this whole folksy, salt-of-the-earth vibe, but then there's that one line that just sends chills down your spine. Something about their products containing other bits and pieces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where the story takes a turn. Suddenly you're not just thinking about missing women, you're thinking about what might be happening at that plant. What are those other bits and pieces? It's like the screenplay is daring us to ask the question, to confront the possibility that something truly gruesome is happening right under everyone's noses. And it made me think, how wild do we really know the people and places we think we know? That's the thing about secrets, right? They have a way of festering in the dark. And sometimes the most seemingly innocent facades can conceal something truly sinister. Okay, but before we go full conspiracy theory, let's talk about another layer of strange in this story. The castle. What is up with that place? So, the castle, according to the screenplay, is this abandoned processing plant on the Sanders property. It's steeped in history, full of old equipment and eerie vibes. But here's the catch. It's not on any maps. Wait, what? <laughs> Not on any maps. How is that even possible? Right. And that's where those alarm bells start going off. It's like, okay, what are they hiding? Is this just a quirky detail or is it a sign of something more deliberate, more calculated? It's like something out of a true crime documentary. You have this successful family, this thriving business, but then you start noticing these inconsistencies, these things that just don't quite add up. And you have to wonder what else are they hiding? And just when you think it can't get any creepier, goodbye stranger, throws in another curveball. 
the annual harvest festival. Right. On the surface, it sounds innocent enough. It's a celebration of the harvest, complete with hayrides, pumpkin spice lattes, and a massive corn maze. Except Goodbye Stranger suggests that the maze might serve another purpose. Controlling access, keeping prying eyes away from, well, something. Okay, now that's just straight up suspicious. A corn maze designed to what? disorient people, confuse them, prevent them from seeing something they shouldn't see. It really makes you wonder, what's the point of a corn maze if not to get lost in? But maybe that's the point, right? To disorient, to confuse. It's a chilling thought, isn't it? To think that something as seemingly innocent as a corn maze could be used as a tool of deception. And speaking of deception, that brings us to the FBI agents tasked with navigating this labyrinth of secrets, Luca and Gina. Ah, yes, the dynamic duo. At least that's how Goodbye Stranger portrays them. You've got Gina, all about the hard evidence, the by-the-book approach. And then there's Luca, our resident free spirit, always seeing things from a different angle. And they really highlight those contrasting approaches in the screenplay. You have Gina, who dives headfirst into the investigation of Sanders McNulty, convinced that the plant holds the key to the disappearances. Which, on the surface, makes sense, right? I mean, we've got those cryptic lines about other bits and pieces, the suspicious lack of information about the castle. It all seems to point back to the family business. Right. But is it really that simple? Or... Is Goodbye Stranger setting us up for a classic red herring? Because remember, things are rarely as they seem in these kinds of stories. And that's what makes Luca's approach so intriguing. She's not just looking at the obvious clues. She's paying attention to the silences, the inconsistencies. Remember those hand-drawn maps she's always sketching? Those maps. They're not just geographical, are they? They're like visual representations of her thought process, connecting those seemingly disparate threads of the case. It's about perspective seeing the bigger picture when everyone else is focused on the details. It's like those moments in a mystery novel where the detective steps back from the evidence board and suddenly it all clicks into place. They see the connections that everyone else has missed. Exactly. And those connections often lead back to the most important question in any investigation. Why? Why would someone commit such a horrific act? Why go to such lengths to cover it up? And in the case of Goodbye Stranger, that question leads us to Aaron's confession. Is he really the monster the screenplay initially wants us to believe he is? Or is there something else going on? Right. Because let's be honest, that confession scene is less about what Aaron confesses to and more about why he's confessing in the first place. Is it guilt? A desperate attempt to protect his family? Or maybe something even more calculated, more sinister? It's like he's playing a high-stakes poker game and we can't figure out if he's bluffing or if he's holding all the cards. It's a brilliant narrative device, keeping us guessing, making us question every character's motives, and ultimately those questions lead us back to the patriarch himself, Jacob Sanders. I mean, talk about a plot twist. Just when you think you've got it all figured out, goodbye, stranger, pulls the rug out from under you. And it makes you question everything you thought you knew about these characters, right? Especially Jacob. He's the patriarch, the pillar of the community. But as the story unfolds, you start to see these cracks in his facade. It's like those lines about his wife leaving him, how he felt disrespected, how he saw women as, well, I don't want to repeat it, but it wasn't pretty. It's unsettling, for sure. But those little glimpses into his psyche, his resentments, they paint a disturbing picture. And they make you wonder if those other bits and pieces mentioned earlier, well, you start to connect those dots in a way that's pretty terrifying. It's like those moments in a horror movie when the music swells and you just know something bad is about to happen. Except, in this case, it's not a jump scare. It's a slow, creeping realization that the monster might be someone you'd never suspect. And that's the brilliance of Goodbye Stranger. It doesn't just point the finger at Jacob and shout, he's the killer. It's much more subtle than that. It plants those seeds of doubt, those unsettling details, and it lets the audience draw their own conclusions. And let's be real, the more we learn about Jacob, the more plausible it seems that he could be behind these disappearances. I mean, the screenplay gives him motive, opportunity. And let's not forget the resources, right? Yeah. He's got the plant, those isolated properties, the annual harvest festival that draws in huge crowds and provides the perfect distraction. It's like everything about his life, everything that seems so normal, so mundane, suddenly takes on this sinister undertone. It reminds me of that saying, the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. 
And in a way, that's what makes Goodbye Stranger so effective. It taps into that primal fear, that unease, that maybe, just maybe, just maybe, the monster are real, and they're living among us, hiding in plain sight. It's a chilling thought to end on, but it's a thought worth pondering. Because while Goodbye Stranger is a work of fiction, it forces us to confront the uncomfortable reality that sometimes the truth is far stranger and far more terrifying than anything we could imagine. So the next time you're at a local festival, enjoying a barbecue, or just passing by a family-owned business, remember things aren't always what they seem.